Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to learn about time series anomaly detection, which is basically the possibility of taking our data based on time and detect something like spikes or the beginning of a persistent deviation, a trend. This is great for something like sales. Detect points in, in, in the year where your sales got a spike or were going down quickly in a range of time. It's great for taking decisions. And it's not only for sales. I'm just saying one example. But we can use it for checking the behavior of our users or, or our visitors for checking their reviews, a lot of stuff, and detecting real changes that happened for X, Y factors and take action based on that. It's great for alerts and many more. And it's used for things like cybersecurity, customer analysis, business uh, intelligence, and many more things. So let's see where we can get with it. Okay, first we need to understand our data or what we can provide to this algorithm. So here I have a data set of sales by date, which is basically a data set called shampoo sales over a three year period. It's from data market. It's provided by the time series data, data library and it's created by Rob Hindman. It's a sample data set. And yes, it has the month and how many sales. This could be anything. That could be anything. It could be how many visitors do you have in your web page in a week, every week, or uh, if you get, uh, if you have a way to count how many cyber attacks you're getting, you can get, uh, you can detect spikes on it by just having the how many cyber attacks you have every single day or every single week or every single month. Just, just you just need a quantity and a time, and you should be able to get detect behavior uh, changes or spikes. In this case, we'll be using sales. So now that we understand our data and know if we have up the month and the number of sales. Let's uh, we have to create a class that represents that and I have here the month and the cells in, in my class cells. I can have now an array which will contain all these items. I just make the conversion. Let's see where I make the conversion here. I just take the CSV and convert it. I convert it to an enumerable to load it to my machine learning context as an enumerable. But we could learn we could load anything. We could load even the CSV directly. I just wanted to use an enumerable, an enumerable to make it easy to understand if we want to like take it from a DB context of .NET or other data source. I think it's more common in this way. So yeah, and we also need this a sales prediction, which is which basically will be our output class. I have our sales prediction class, and it will give us a double array. This double array contains only three items. The alert, which is ba which basically will tell us if yes or no one zero if a uh, that our a point in our data has a spike or a weird change. Then we have the score and the p values, which are basically statistic parameters for uh, for our use. We will not take them into account for our example. I think we can get what we need by just using the alert. So okay. Now let's see how I make the predictions. It's really simple. It doesn't require a lot of code. To detect spikes, we need to use something called the tech IID spike. It's a, it, it, it provides us an estimator and it requires basic stuff. The output will be sales prediction, as I mentioned before, the prediction property from the sales prediction class. And the input will be number of sales, which comes from the sales class. And you might think, where is the date? Yeah, we don't care. We don't care about the date because what happens is that it will detect spikes based on the index. And because we will have the index exactly the same, we if if they said that in the third in this uh, third item uh, we have a uh, spike, we just go here and take the label. So it's really easy. It will set in which point in the in the data. It, it has found the, the spike. Cool. Now that that's clear and our algorithm know which column needs to read to get our, our the values, we need to set some statistic parameters so as how many confidence it needs to have to like detect if there's a spike or not. Like it, how much confidence like uh, to it needs to have to like make sure that it will provide a zero 
or I want a Boolean detecting if it if it, we really have a spike. And the data, the data size for analysis. We don't care a lot about this one. I'm just dividing my, my data set size by four, and it should be enough to get an accurate representation. So, okay. And I need first to train my model. To train my model, I just said, okay, a spike estimator fit this data view. This data view could be empty here, and we can save already our model by just um, doing a uh, context save model into a file so we could reuse it. But in this case, it's completely unnecessary. It, it's, it's really quick, and based on our current data, we don't need to train. Uh, so yeah, now that we have already fitted our data or trained our model in theory, we just transform our data into the output. Like what will happen is that it will convert, a, we, we, it will convert this to, the, to this output, to uh, an, e, an, an e data view that will have a column called prediction. And now we can call a create enumerable and send this and it will map automatically that, okay, in this class, uh, we have a prediction uh, property and this has an e data view with a, with a prediction column. Put that in there and that's it. Uh, reuse row, row object. This is ba it's just to uh, specify if we want to create a new object for every single item. Uh, let's put it as false. No, no problem. So now what we have here after we run this, as we detected the we detected all the spikes and everything, we will get an array of sales prediction, which 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 will have exactly the same quantity of items that our sales has. And in the predictions, we will have an array of three items. The alert, which is a zero no if that point, an end specific point, has a spike. We will check that out later, but let's see how the other one works. It's exactly the same thing, but the method changes. It's a tech IID change point. And this is the method that will lead us to check the beginning of a trend, the beginning of a persistent change in time. So we provide the same parameters. Uh, what will be the output column? What will be the input column? Uh, the confidence that we need and how much uh, uh, items from the data set will be taken into account for every single set detection. We leave it as uh, our data set divided by four, train our model, transform our data, and we get the same predictions. Cool, let's check uh, everything. So here, what I'm doing is that I just take my sales, I create an instance of the email context, which is something that I'm sending here. As you can see, the, everything here comes from the ML context. This is something that we have already talked in some of our videos. And we have the data view, which is basically our data converted to a form to the class that it's used for, for ML.net. We also need to provide the data set size because the I data view is, doesn't provide, at least for this data type, doesn't provide the count of elements. So we have to provide it here. So take the sales, create a machine learning context, ML context, uh, load our data. So we have an IDATA view, the, uh, a format that, that ML context can understand, and we get our predictions. It runs the process, uh, uh, trains its model, and transforms the data, and we get our sales prediction back. Now I do a little display, which is basically uh, I just create a little plot and okay, I display spikes and everything. But let, let me show you how I detect if there's a spike. I'm not only making it into a little graphic, but I'm also uh, showing it in, in, the, in the console. So let's, let's go quickly. I just take every single sale that I have. I just I loop through it and I get, okay, first I have the, the, the sale item, which we basically at, this, at the index zero should be this one. Now I get the spike that it's uh, the spike prediction that it's for that index, and it will have uh, on the first value of the prediction because of course this gif has the property prediction, which is a double array, the one that we have here on our on our model. But the first value of that array is if it has a spike or it doesn't has a spike. And this one is the same thing. We have 
a, a three value array and the and the first value will show you if we have a change or we don't have a change these are the predictions that we already got from the methods before so as i mentioned before yeah i take the predictions i go to a prediction property take the first value and if it's one if it's one then it means that add the cell set the cell month there is a spike and i just add a point to my graphic and uh, that will be shown for displaying but basically that's it we just uh, take the predictions and we by just checking what value it's on the first on the first item from the array we can have exactly where the spike was or where the beginning of a trend started let's run the application and see what we can get and see if the data makes sense so we already have some data here we we know that at 9 of january we have a change which is this one and we know that at 11 of January, 10, Fev 10 February, 7 of March, 9 of March, we have some spikes. This is this is great. This is already an alert. This is something that we that we could that we could use. But let's see it in a graphic to see if it makes sense because we as humans we can detect those spikes with common sense. But let's see if the, the machine did it accurately. So let me just open this. And here, let me just, uh, I think I didn't explain you how the labels work, but the, the spike points will be shown in red with a triangle, the change points will be shown in blue as a square, and the normal, every single item will be shown as a, as a circle with a, with a line in green that's the default of Oxaplot. But as you can see here, I can detect that here I have a change, a change in the behavior. This is something that had never happened before in this way. It's it was an, a persistent a, a persistent downward in 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 this time range, and I also have these spikes here that, as we can see, make a lot of sense. If you look at the chart, this was really a spike at this point in time. As humans, by just looking at this without the... Let me just remove for, for, for the sake of examples. Let me just remove that and just see the graphic without the, the indicators. Cool. Now I have our, our graphics with and without the indicators. So cool. If we check this, of course, it makes sense. And yeah, like without the indicators, we can like detect stuff. But the thing is that we did this with code. Our, our machine or our programs can now check this kind of things and make alerts. So we don't have to check graphics every time and detect things and make sure that we don't miss anything. It's the, the algorithms which are detecting this. And this could work for a lot of stuff. Maybe you publish something in a specific month that got a spike and now you can repeat that kind of stuff to get into that trend again. Or maybe uh, because of changing quality or stuff that maybe different factors that affected your sales your reviews uh, the uses of the usage of, of your products all that kind of stuff can be measured so you can detect spikes or changes in the behavior changes in trends like this one i hope i can see how much ideas you can get but because there is a lot of stuff that can be done by uh, just checking an anom anom anomalies in a, in a time series you see, to get the predictions only, we took less than 11 lines. And that could give you notifications when you're making the right decisions for your business or your YouTube channel or your computer if you have a memory leak. Any data can work to make predictions of spikes or a changing on a trend. So why don't use it? I know you can get great ideas and solutions with this. Check the code and check the documentation for more information. This is ML.net. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button. It's right there. It's easy to click. So I don't I think it's a waste if you don't use it. You should use it. That's why these people on YouTube developed it. And if you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe. We always upload things and check our other videos are great. And some of them include me. So yeah, I know you will like them. Bye bye and happy coding. Ha, ha, ha.